the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi guys and welcome back to the course. In this lesson we're going to talk about another form control and that is the checkbox. So I have a quick example up on the screen now and then we're going to take a look at how I created this example. So I have a few different sections on this worksheet. On the right hand side I have my data that I'm going to be using and this might be just some sales data for 2017, 2018 and 2019. I then have my report in the middle, which contains the same data, but it also contains some spark lines as well. And if you've never come across spark lines before, they're basically mini charts that are contained within one cell, which can be super helpful if you're looking to see the trend of specific sets of data. And then over on the right hand side, I have some checkboxes. Now, currently, all of these checkboxes are selected. But what I could do is if I was only interested in the data for 2017 and 2018, I could deselect 2019 and that removes the data from the table and my trend lines update. If I only wanted to see data for 2018 and 2019, I could deselect 2017. It removes the data and my trend lines also update. So I can toggle these checkboxes off and on depending on the data that I'm interested in seeing. And these checkboxes can be used in numerous different ways to display data on a dashboard. So now we've seen the example, let's recreate it. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to add in three checkboxes so that I can toggle between the 2017, 2018 and 2019 data. Once again, we can jump up to the developer tab into our form controls. And if we click the lower half of the insert button, the one that we want to use this time is checkbox. Once again, I get a very small little cross, which means I can now draw my text box. So let's draw something that looks like that. Now, by default, Excel is going to give your checkboxes just a generic name. So in this case, checkbox seven. And of course, we can change this simply by double clicking and then we can edit the text. So I want this one to say show 2017. Now I can also make some other formatting changes to this control by right clicking and going down to format control. Now there's a few things that I want to change in here. The first one is that I want to link this text box to a specific cell. And the cell that I'm going to link this text box to is this one down here, which currently doesn't have anything in it. I'm then going to go and just apply some formatting to make these checkboxes stand out a little bit. So let's jump across to colors and lines. And I'm going to say I want to fill with a light blue fill and click on OK. And I think I might make this a little bit smaller. Now, what you'll see is that when I actually click in this checkbox where I have the cell link, you can see now it says true. So essentially, when you have a check mark in this box, Excel is going to return the result of true. When you don't have a check mark in the box, it's going to return a result of false. And we can then use this true or false information to build out our report. Now, before we get to that, I'm going to add two more checkboxes in. So the easiest way to do this is simply to duplicate the current checkbox and then just change the title. Now, when it comes to clicking on checkboxes, it can be quite tough because if you just left click your mouse, it's actually going to select the checkbox as opposed to the actual form control object. So what I prefer to do is right click my mouse and then click again to select the actual object. Then I can do control D to duplicate and I'm going to do control D to duplicate again. So let's move these into a bit of a nicer position. I'm just going to place those underneath each other. And now I'm going to double click and just change the text that I can see in these text boxes. So this one is going to say 2018 and this one is going to say 2019. So the two form controls that I've just added, I now need to right click, format control and on the control tab, I want to link them to the correct cells. So let's remove B16 from there because I want this one to link to cell B17. And for this checkbox, I want it to link to cell 
B18. And there we go. So now you can see that as I toggle these off and on, my trues and falses underneath change accordingly. So what I'm essentially aiming to do here is, depending on which one of these checkboxes I've selected, I want the relevant data to appear in the column in the report. If the checkbox isn't selected, I don't want anything in that particular column. Now, because we now have an output result of true or false, depending on if we have these toggled off and on, we can use this information to construct a formula. So what I'm going to say here is equals if, and then I need to provide my logical test. So I'm going to say if the value in cell B16, and I'm going to press F4 to lock this. If that is true, I want it to return the values listed just here and F4 to lock. If it's false, so if this value is false and not true, I want it to return nothing. Close my bracket. Let's hit enter and see what we get. I get my values. Now, currently these are unformatted, but we're going to deal with that in a moment. Let's do the same for the other two columns. We're going to use the same formula. So if our logical test this time is if the value in cell B17, if that is true, I want it to return the results for 2018, F4 to lock. If it's false, I want it to return nothing. And then finally, if the value in cell B18, F4 to lock, if the value is true, I want it to return the 2019 results. And if it's false, I want it to return nothing. And there we go. So let's just give this a little test. If I deselect show 2019 checkbox, it removes those results. If I deselect 2018, those disappear. Deselect 2017 and those disappear as well. If I'm just interested in 2017 and 2018, I can select them and it's going to show me those values. So the checkboxes control the result down here, which is a result of true or false. And then we're using that true or false to pull back the data from our data table. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this data isn't formatted. So currently the data that's being pulled through doesn't have a currency symbol or any decimal places. So essentially it hasn't applied the accounting format. Now we can do this automatically using conditional formatting. So let's select our first column of values. I'm going to go up to conditional formatting and down to new rule. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And my formula is going to be very simple. I'm just going to say if, and then I'm going to select cell B16. So the input into conditional formatting is going to be a result of true or false. So if it's true, I want to format with accounting formatting. So essentially, if I deselect 2017, that's going to disappear. If I show it again, it's going to come through with the correct formatting. Now I need to do the same for the other years, because if you look at 2018, that's still unformatted. So we need to apply the same conditional formatting rule to this set of data. So new rule use a formula. We're going to link it to this cell this time, which is B17. And if that's true, then it's going to show the data and it's going to show it in accounting format with two decimal places and a dollar symbol. OK and OK again. Let's check to make sure that is working. Let's deselect all of these. 2017, 2018 looks good to me. The final one we need to do is 2019. So this is the same principle. Use a formula. When this cell shows true, we're going to format with accounting format. And there we go. It is as simple as that. Now, the final little thing you might want to do here, and this is just really an introduction into spark lines, is you might want to add a trend line here so you can see the trend of sales across these three years. And spark lines are a great way of doing this because essentially they're like having a mini line chart or a mini column chart, depending on which one you select, contained within one cell. So let's click in this first cell and we're going to jump up to insert and we have a group here called spark lines. Now you can choose to insert a line spark line, a column spark line or a win loss spark line. 
And I would only choose win loss really if I have negative values in my data. For this particular data set, I'm going to choose a line. So the first thing I need to tell Excel is the data range that I want represented in this spark line. So I want to see the trend across these three years, F7 to H7. The location range, well, it's picked up where I'm currently clicked, which happens to be correct, which is cell I7. And if I click on OK, it's going to give me a little spark line. Now I'm going to do a bit of formatting to this spark line just to make it easier to read. On the spark line contextual ribbon in the show group, I'm going to add some markers to mark the high point, the low point, and also the first and last points. Once I have it in one cell, I can simply drag it down and I now have a little spark line that shows the trend for each of my years. So that's just a bit of an introduction to spark lines. We're going to be talking more about these later on in the course. But for now, that is it. I will see you in the next lesson. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.